And before I sentence you, I'd like to say a few words about your arrest record. What the hell? Yo, the sign is real simple, B. It says wrap it up. Wrap that shit up, B. I don't think that's a good idea. Man, you want some too? You better wrap it up. So we are finally here. We are at the end of the road. Future State is over. And it's kind of, it's time to take a look back at what we've just experienced for the last two months. Obviously, that was a, a tremendous amount of titles, a tremendous amount of new characters. We were jumping timelines and all kinds of things. So we won't be able to hit really everything, but we are going to try and just give some general thoughts and feelings on Future State as a whole. Me personally, exceeded my expectations, but my expectations were so low. This wasn't uh, an event that I'm, I was really, I'm still excited for. I'm excited that it's over, but I, I didn't find it completely enjoyable, but there are some definite diamonds in the rough. And here to talk with me about Future State to wrap it up as we get ready for Infinite Frontier on Tuesday is my good friend, El Percherino, the Poobah of Comics. Perch, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'm glad you could make it. Obviously, we've been hearing about DC 5G, Generation 5 became Future State for a very long time. You know, I, I don't think it's exactly what people were expecting. And there were certainly some highs and lows. Me personally, if I were to grade it out, I would give it like, I don't know, like a C minus. It's This isn't terrible. It's it's not the worst thing ever, but it's so massive. It would it would be really hard to get a, a tremendous grade on something at this scale. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these stories are kind of remnant stories or things that are written and then kind of put on the shelf. And, and some of them felt like that. They felt like comics that uh, maybe, you know, like like the, the next Batman, the first issue of that um, was done some time ago. And then when they started, when they finally like, oh, we're going to publish this and they get to that second issue, the, the penciler is uh, no longer available. So now they're now they're having to switch mm -hmm. art. It had a lot of feeling like that, like like, hey, we're, we're going and we're we found some stuff uh, behind the cushions and we're going to get it published. And some of it was good, uh, but, but a lot of it just felt kind of out there. Yeah. You could definitely tell some th certain things were, were contracted and, and mixed around, but you know, it, it's over. It's time to talk about some things. So we're going to do it like we do normally do a wrap up. We'll talk about just three kind of big picture ideas that I personally have with this future state perch will chime in. Maybe he'll have one or two more. I will sure. talk about three specific things that I thought were done very well, and then three specific things that I think were not very good. So let's get into some of these big picture items. The first thing I want to say is the backup stories felt completely worthless for the most part. They did not add any value for the money. In my opinion, I don't think uh, this experiment with backup stories is going to go all that well. I, there were some some decent ones here and there, but for the most part, I could have done without them and would have preferred to save my money. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think the uh, you know the the big exception was Outsiders. Uh, I think, but but there, I would have taken that story and I would have just rolled it into a separate comic. I, I wouldn't have. I would have lowered the price, um, let people opt in and buy it just on its own. Um, there, there's a handful of others that were okay, but I, I liked, uh, generally I like the Mr. Miracle stuff. Um, but you know, again, just publish that as one issue, just, just collect all four parts, put it in one issue. And, and, you know, I, I think that would have been better. I, I don't like the idea that we're going to hold somebody hostage for, you know, seven ninety nine or some ex inflated price. And in many cases, the backup stories were radically different than the main story that you're reading. So, you know, even if say, I thought the Mr. Miracle story was good. I, I don't feel like that should have been forced on somebody who was, uh, you know, just trying to read, you know, the the Superman, the main story. It didn't it didn't fit, and it wasn't. I, I don't think that was right. So, and, and like you said, most of the uh, the backup stories just felt like tryouts for writers that DC might want to work with at some point in the future. It wasn't good. Yeah, it didn't feel good financing those tryouts. Yeah, and we obviously know that these backup stories are a part of DC's strategy moving forward. All the major titles. Batman, Detective Comics, Superman, uh, Justice League, you're all going to have these backup titles with an increased cover price. I don't see this going away anytime soon. I do think this is going to perturb people. If it isn't already, it, it's going to grind on them very soon. I have a prediction, Perch, that within nine months, these backup stories go away, but the cover price stays the same. Yeah, I, I'm, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's shifting the dollars up. 
And I, I again, I think it's I think it's lousy. And and right now, if you're trying to build your universe and get more people into it and and do these tryouts or give people other glimpses, honestly, you need to do it on your dime, not the not the customers. You should if you want to do the backup stories, do them. Cover price should remain low, and you should just get more comic for your money. And that would that would accomplish your goal of getting some people some some publishing exposure and and frankly earning yourself some goodwill. But uh, I don't like it. Uh, I, and again, there were a couple exceptions. The the short there there were some, but by and large, they were forgettable. So the next big observation I have is that the timeline itself was very confusing. It did not play in well to the stories because we we are reading things that were happening in different orders, but they were they were kind of talking about things that were happening in other stories that maybe happened years ahead. And you're like, is this happening at the same time? You know, it became very confusing. They should have time stamped these comic books. There were also a ton of new characters that were introduced, and it all became a bit overwhelming and hard to process and keep like in my head what was actually going on and when. Yeah, I, I think it, it would have just gone a long way to have a first page with the time, with kind of what you're seeing now on the screen, just where this story fits into any, everything. Um, that would have been great. Uh, the magistrate stories got very strange because they were happening at different moments during that, and you couldn't really figure out where everything was at. And I mean, again, we are living in the uh, linear verse where everything matters simultaneously. So uh, no, no, please people in the comments, I'm aware the linear verse is one small pocket of the omniverse. You don't need to explain that to me again, but um, that was a joke. Uh, but, it, but it would just, it would have been nice to throw this branding on here a little bit to help guide people because uh, to your point, there were little Easter eggs or things they were putting into the comics that were supposed to hint at kind of the future state of a different comic. But because everything was coming out in a random order, you, you, you didn't get it. And, you know, it, it just it wasn't worth the journey to really figure this out on your own. Yeah. So the, the timelines were really confusing me. There was an abundance of new characters. I do think there were some highs in here. I obviously believe that the Yara Floor that we met within the Joelle Jones series. I like that character. I can't wait to meet her some more. I also thought this new version of Bolt. Was a was a really cool character. The characters they introduced in Aquaman. So there were some some of these new characters. I think are are kind of hits, and I hope to see them some more in the future. Uh, but it was a lot of new characters. Yeah, it was, and I mean it, it's kind of the nature of this event. But um, but but there were some things that that you can definitely look in here and, and build on. Um, yeah, like I said, Yara Floor uh, gotten definitely some some fan support. Uh, some people for maybe some of the wrong reasons, but that's okay. Whatever reason is the right reason. Um, it's uh, you know I think I think the Aquaman title was was a, frankly a good title and introduced good new characters. Um, that was that was really nice. Uh, you know I guess we'll get into more of the individual titles, but there was some there was some good stuff. But it it, it kind of the same problem as the timeline when they're throwing so much at you all at once. It just you know it it, it becomes a blur. And anyone reading kind of the six to eight issues a week. It, it they start to lose their impact very quickly. I, I agree. So the next thing I'll talk about will be the, the Batman universe. Now, it was a bit confusing because of the timeline, which you've already talked about, but like this felt much more cohesive, like it was mapped out better <laughs> than what they, like they were doing with Superman and Justice League and some of the other titles. So I will give them this. For the most part, it, you know, the Batman titles felt like you were in this magistrate controlled Gotham. Now the art styles didn't always match up, which was always going to be a, a big chore when you have that many titles, but I will give them a B plus or A for effort for trying to at least make one of these universes feel coherent. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Magistrate storyline in, in general. I just, uh, this this abs this isn't for me, but you're right. I think this family of books did try and come together um, it did try and kind of present at least some level of cohesive view, uh, much better than say the Superman books did, which were, were all over the place. But, uh, it, you know, it, 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 that was, it was a decent effort. I mean, what's strange about all this is the title I enjoyed most out of this, uh, magistrate Batman universe was Catwoman, which I think did great stuff with the premise. Um, you know, over and all, I think the next Batman was, was a disappointment largely in particular with the amount of Money, I'm sure they paid the writer to come in and do that. Uh, Dark Detective, I thought was a slightly better book, but even there, I, I I guess what what worries me about the Batman books is we're gonna have however many years, two, three, four years of leading up to this, and this is just not a journey I 
I'm just not interested in seeing the rise of the magistrate at all. And I'm curious if other fans will. I'll be honest. I'm more interested in the magistrate than I am in the Fox family like dysfunction that was in the next Batman. I did not find that interesting in the slightest. Yeah, I'll give you that one. I mean, yeah, I agree. But, but uh, it's kind of like my very low interest in the magistrate is uh, is surpassed by my extremely low interest in the, in the Fox family dynamic. Um, yeah, which is, again, a shame because I think Batwing is a character from the New 52. Uh, and then separately, uh, Jace Fox that we're seeing here. It's an interesting character. There's, there's cool stuff you can do with him. Um, tying him into that soup of the family is just not, I, not for me. Yeah, so ho hopefully that won't bleed in too much into the Batman and Detective Comics stuff moving forward. But we are absolutely going to be seeing the Magistrate, Mayor Nakano, Peacekeeper 1, and all that that stuff is going to be... We're absolutely moving towards this in Batman and Detective Comics. There's no getting around that. Yeah, um, the A what A day is uh, is just a few days away now in, um, in from Frontier Zero. So it all kicks off. Absolutely. So let's get into some of the specifics, some of the things I really did like. And when, there are some things I absolutely love. First one is I liked, I really liked everything that Ram V did, specifically Swamp Thing. I think, you know, it's potential like classic, immediate classic story. I also think his Catwoman was probably the second best story within Future State overall. Ram V, you know, knocked it out of the park. I think he made an impact. And he's, we talked about him being one of the rising stars. And I definitely, I believe he proved his mettle on these two titles. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Swamp Thing was great. I, I think if, uh, regardless of your feelings on Future State, if you got scared off from a lot of negative press for a year on it, uh, Swamp Thing is absolutely something you want to pick up. It's a, it's a, a wonderful story. Um, the, the funny thing, and I've mentioned it before, is the, the books you're seeing up on the screen, and we're going to talk about one in particular, I think, um, they all, when the, when the titles were good, the negative was that there wasn't enough of them. Doing Swamp Thing in two issues, it needed to be six. I mean, I, I, you know, here I'm, I'm going to lobby for decompression. You need to have more. <laughs> uh, same thing with Catwoman. It was a good story. I could have easily seen twice as many titles there. Uh, same thing with Yara Floor. Yeah, so, I, you know, not everybody was well-equipped to tell a fully fleshed out, you know, impactful story in 44, 48 pages. Ram V did that well. Joel yeah. Jones also did a great job introducing Yara Floor to the DC Universe in her Wonder Woman title. I will admit the character was all over the place because when she was in the other titles, like uh, Batman Wonder or I'm Super Su Superman Wonder Woman, the Justice League, it felt like a completely different character. But yeah. I do like the character here. She's got a, a definite. Or she's got her own personality. It's different from the other Wonder Woman uh, characters that we've had in the past. She looks terrific, and it was a fun story. No, it was. I, I liked, the, you're, you're absolutely right. This title uh, gave us a different personality of a hero that we haven't really seen before in other places too. I, it was a good, it was a good book. Um, she was incredibly obnoxious and, and poorly written in the other titles, which is just a shame. But uh, in this one, it was, it was great. And that, that bodes well for the solo series coming up. And the good thing is all those writers are on these titles in Infant Frontier. So we, we know that those are probably going to be very solid. Another writer that's going to be coming in in Infant Frontier is Philip Kennedy Johnson, mm -hmm. another creator that we've talked about as being an up-and-coming writer. He's going to be writing Superman and action comics out of the gate. He wrote uh, that Superman World of, Worlds of War story. I didn't personally like that one. I think he did much better than this House of L one-shot story. It's kind of weird. It was the only one that was a one-shot. But it feels like DC left a ton of money on the table Whereas Swamp Thing, Catwoman, and Wonder Woman, I would have loved to, for the stories to have been longer. It almost felt like House of L had to be longer. It was such so compressed with so many new characters. I enjoy the concept. I think the concept itself is amazing. But the execution would have been so much better if it was fleshed out in in like six or eight issues. You know what I'm saying? Oh, ab absolutely. Uh, so that was a, it was a, it was a great comic, but it was it was one it was criminally one issue, and it. Uh, it, it it it's just baffling that this would be a one shot. It needed to be more. I was supposed to build on the Worlds of War title, but it really didn't. Uh, I did. I thought the Worlds of War was probably the best example of a comic where the main story got lost with three backup stories. That uh, it just you know it was it was a bad move. But I I have a lot of 
optimism for Johnson's run on Superman. But I mean, if there's if there's one thing you do, like quickly green light six to 12 issues of a maxi series of house of L and do that. Like, like forget the future state Gotham book you have coming out, do this one. Uh, it's, it's a really good concept. It, uh, you know, it done in one issue. It felt like an incredible tease of what could be an amazing story. And then was done. Yeah. It's like, this should be like your free comic book day to oh, yeah. launch out your big maxi series, you know? Yeah. So that was um, so. Those are the good things, and like I said, there were some very good comics. That Swamp Thing two parter is like a five star comic. That, that's almost as good as you're gonna get. As it far really as, is. Uh, storytelling in forty eight pages is phenomenal. You know the the other one, um, not on your screen, but it, but we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, hands down. I think uh, Aquaman threw out a really good story as well, and you know some good stuff there. But but anyway, absolutely, we'll be talking about uh, Brandon Thomas uh, with Gervain Darwin. I believe on Tuesday when we talk about Milestone, he's going to be writing one of those stories. So he's, he took a step up in my eyes as, as far as the, the Aquaman title. Issue one was phenomenal. Issue two was a little bit of a letdown, but still as an entire story, it was it was terrific and a great introduction to two new characters that I hope we get to see more in the future. Yep, absolutely. So let's get into to the bad stuff. And there was a lot of middling titles, but there was a lot of stuff kind of down at the bottom that I wish I hadn't ever touched. <laughs> uh, first among them is Brandon Vietti's The Flash. Oh, yeah. I felt bad for Wally West. I felt bad for myself. Like You shouldn't feel like that when you're done reading a comic book. It yeah. shouldn't make you feel icky. And I, I loathe this story. Yeah. I, that it was a, I mean, it, it, on all fronts, I, I think the, the joke of let's mess around with Wally is uh, it's no longer. It, it's it's not funny on any level, and it's it, it 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 turns off fans. It's not a good story, combined with they're continuing to screw around with that character. Um, it it felt simultaneously uh, tired, like I've read it all before, and just in, in bad in new ways. It just it was just a, it, it was. I think that was the worst book of the bunch by far. I, I know some people had a similar reaction to the Shazam books. Uh, obviously, we found out he was a mass murderer as well. So, yeah, I just yeah. wish they would stop doing it. Shazam um, was, I mean, Shazam, at least there's a, a reason for it. In fact, they, I mean, and, and that I think builds on the character, the idea that you take Billy out of Shazam and it's he's not a complete person. And it's, you know, and, and I think that's that speaks to the the power of, of Billy and the fact that, that that part of his soul and his personality is important. I, I think that that all, you know, I don't want to see Shazam out there murdering people, but it still makes sense to me. I, I can get it and I, I get the concept and I'm willing to to go along with uh, a dark run on Shazam because it, it, it highlights Billy, it inflates him. With Flash, it's just, it's yet another story of, oh, somebody's gone amok using the speed force and while he's possessed and he's murdering people and it's, uh, it just it 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 took all of the old and tired things from Flash that we we're very sick of and threw it into one two part story. I could, I agree. So the next one that I really did not like was Superman and Metropolis. I think John Kent is a f fantastic comic character. I think he is a worthy successor to the Superman uh, legacy, and I I will you know I like seeing him as Superman, especially in the DC's universe. In some of the other uh, times that we've seen him at grown up and fully fleshed out as Superman, this version of John Kent as Superman is a complete idiot. He was yeah. duped by one of the weirdest, lamest villains I've ever seen in my life. I still don't know what brain cells was supposed to represent. It was absolutely garbage. And worst was he was overshadowed by his crazy cousin. So they made John Kent look stupid in this title. They made Kara Zor-El look even worse in this title. It, like, apparently she's jealous of Clark and John Kent and you know she wants to punch him and, and do mean things to him. I really dis dislike Superman and Metropolis on special levels. Not quite to Flash's level, but I did not enjoy it at all. No, I mean this this title had decent art in it. Um yes, it that was that was a plus. I mean it was pretty to look at at times, but yeah, it's everybody looked dumb. I mean, uh, all the characters, the hero and the villain and the, the, the cousin and every everybody came out stupid in this book. And that was uh, it, it. It wasn't an enjoyable story. It's a case where you've got two issues of, of nothing. I mean, it, it 
it, it was just it was a bad book. I, I I don't know what else to say. It was it was not fun to read, and everybody was dumb. I agree with you one hundred percent. And I will. There's a special category. I don't think really any of the team up books succeeded for the most part. I thought maybe the best one was Superman Batman because I thought the characterization on Superman was pretty solid. But I thought yeah. the story there was was silly and kind of stupid. I didn't like Justice League. I think you liked that one more than I did. But I think the two worst, well, you know, Wonder Woman Superman was also very bad. Yeah. But I think the two worst were Teen Titans and Suicide Squad. I thought they were borderline atrocious. Yeah, Teen Titans was just, uh, I mean, all over the place with the story uh, and not a, not telling it very well. Um, Suicide Squad was was strange. Again, I, I, Suicide Squad's more of a, there, there was a, a story in there i think to be told they just never got to it exactly and it 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 uh it, it took a premise that might have been interesting and just went nowhere with it so it, it it yeah i think all these books were were pretty poor uh superman wonder woman was was pretty atrocious i mean that was that, <laughs> that one that one's up there with also characters acting stupid and being stupid and nothing and that one was that. not pretty to look at and yeah that 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 was yeah, that one I think I just disliked more than um, some of the ones on your list. And and frankly, I mean, it's not a team up book; it's a full team book. Uh, the Justice League story was, you know, much like Flash, a lot of the exact same beats we've seen before, a lot, um, and and just just you know, not not the the first issue of Justice League I thought showed premise. The second issue turned it into a, we should be friends, and it it kind of blew up any goodwill it, it established in the first one. And definitely one of my my least favorite new character introductions was Cybeast. Yeah, it was absolutely stupid and worthless. Suicide Squad, like you said, it had some potential. I really like the character Bolt in there, and I'm glad that we're gonna get to see that character more. But it was so weird that it's a Suicide book, Squad book, and you don't see the Suicide Squad until the very last page of the first issue of a two issue story. Yeah. No, a very strangely mapped. Um, again, an interesting kind of thing going on, but it. it, it it fell victim to the same thing Justice League did, and to some extent Legion of Superheroes did, where in the second issue it was supposed to teach us a, a moral or a lesson, and you just didn't care. In a two-issue story where you're in the future with brand new characters who've been swapped and everything else, you know, this idea of like, and now you know, and knowing is half the battle, is just it's 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 dumb. It's a, why it's it's the wrong place for it. So I do think the lows outnumbered the highs, but this this series, you know, or this event for me uh, did better than anticipated. Were there any other uh, lows that you wanted to talk about before we kind of start to wrap this up? Um, no, I, I think, you know, like we talked about, there there was the backup stories, I think, wound up tipping things worse in a lot of cases. I liked the what was going on with Jon Stewart and Green Lantern. I thought it was a good core story. Uh, the first issue, I thought the backups were, were okay. Uh, the second issue, I thought the backups were, were very poor. And and it kind of it, it it tips over the story. You you start to think worse about the core story with these backups. And I think the the idea of you know really digging in and doing some world building that we saw there, we saw in Aquaman, we saw in other places. Um, when you're throwing so much at somebody, you know, when like like you mentioned Aquaman number two, I, I thought it was a it was not as good as the first issue as well. But it's also coming in with seven other or six other comics. There's seven future state comics, all trying to show this this different universe, different future, different all the rest. And so it starts to tip over on itself when you've got that kind of that kind of scheduling. Um, so I, I think they gave away a lot of value. I, to me, it was um, the the most common thing here was that a lot of titles are just kind of in the middle, like Harley Quinn and Nightwing and and just the the immortal Wonder Woman. I mean, these these weren't necessarily awful stories, but they weren't good stories. They were just filler. And, you know, filler is fine if you're getting it for free when you're paying, you know, $3.99 to $7.99 for these comics and filler feels offensive. Yeah, so I, I came away. I'm, I'm excited for this event to be over, personally. I'm excited to get into Infinite Frontier, but now that we're through it and seeing that a lot of this stuff we're leading up to a lot of this stuff within the main stories in Infinite Frontier. I find to be incredibly disappointing. Also, all the backup stories, we've got a taste of what that's like in the DC universe. I'm not a fan. Throw those into the anthology books. You have enough anthologies to hold all those now. Yeah. Uh, you know, the bump in price to me doesn't warrant that. So I, I find that disappointing as well. So I'm excited for a new day, but I'm also a little bit hesitant 
now that I realize that future state is very much tied directly into infinite frontier. Yeah. And, and part of the gimmick they're doing with future state, which a lot of titles did. And if you notice the titles that you and I both enjoyed, they had at least a little bit more of an optimistic tone. Uh, the others were all heading to like, Oh, it's a, it's a dark future. Like, like teen Titans. Oh, look what they've done here. Look at what's gone on with flash. Look at what's gone on with, you know, it, it, it's, I don't like that everything is going to be dark and dystopian. And to think that now we're going to go into March and you're supposed to kind of get on board with these characters and cheer them on, but their future they're all heading toward is a dark dystopian future. I, that's not a fun journey. Uh, for me anyway. I, I mean, I, I don't want to torture myself that way. So I'm <laughs> I'm looking forward to the, you know, part of what made Yara Fleur uh, a good book uh, is that it it had, it, it felt like it, it was an optimistic book and, and told a heroic tale. And maybe people want that. Yes, even though, you know, technically you could say that she lost, but it left on an on a optimistic note, just like Swamp Thing did. Did yeah. we lose Swamp Thing? Yes, but it, he sacrificed himself and gave life to a new world. Yeah, it felt like it was, you know, it, it's not, uh, you know, like like the end of Shazam or the end of uh, Teen Titans or in some of these books where it's just, you know, it's like, ah, surprise ending, it sucks. And <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I, I don't want that. Um, you know, I, I liked seeing Jon Stewart find a new way to win. That's optimism. That that That's, that's what I want to see more of. So, Perch, I know going into this, you know, there were so many rumors around uh, 5G, Generation 5, what turned into being future state we you and i initially were talking about it's going to be like an age of apocalypse pause where we're going to see alternate futures i don't think that's exactly what we got either i think the best uh you know the closest thing that we've ever seen to what we got in future state was probably convergence do you think this was a better execution than convergence yeah, I think it was. I think it's better than convergence. Um, I, that say, I mean, convergence gave us some good things. It gave us some nice Earth two moments. It gave us uh, John Kent and the return of Superman and Lois's marriage and kind of all that, and that was good. Uh, so I like that. But on a whole, I think this was better. But it's it's not. I mean, we're really talking about something that was a complete bomb, and then something that was mostly not a bomb. That's that's kind of how we're yeah. we're doing this. I I do think. I still think this this was like Age of Apocalypse, just poorly planned. If if you picture Age of Apocalypse with very little planning and uh, maybe the writers and the editors not talking to each other, that's what this would have. That's what this looked like. So <laughs> that's what we got. So that is it for Future State. We're gonna wrap her up. We're putting her in the rear view. We got Infinite Frontier coming up. Uh, Perch, I'll let you have the last word on this, and I really do appreciate you coming on here and, and talking about this. No, I, I mean, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. And and like we talked about, those comics that we thought were good, they, they're worth seeking out. There's there's some good books there. And and uh, if you if you were frightened of this, there's there's definitely a couple good titles here. And hopefully we'll see March build to more. <laughs>